everyone in this video i shall try to give you a very little uh, knowledge or insight on an autobiography and the autobiography title is as you have already seen in the thumbnail the truth about me okay it is a story of hijra how we as a society treat hijra and how they are uh, suffering since its inception that all kind of thing our writer has tried to delineate it has tried to del delineate and depict through this autobiography so without any delay let's first try to know the background of the author and then about the autobiography uh, the writer of this autobiography is Ravati. Ravati is a writer, actor, and activist based in Bangalore. And she has worked with Sangama, a sexuality, minority, human rights organization for individuals oppressed due to their sexual preferences. And she is also the author of Unarvam Uruvam, Feelings of the Entire Body, and her autobiography, The Truth About Me. And it is the first of its kind in English from a member of the Hijra community. And The Truth About Me, it is the first of its kind in English from a member of the Hijra community, B. Gita and she is also a writer, translator, social historian, and activist. And she has been active in the Indian women's movement since 1988. And she has written widely, extensively, both in Tamil and English on gender, popular culture, caste, and politics of Tamil Nadu. Okay, so that was a brief introduction about our writer, Rabati. And here I would like to reiterate one thing that do not treat this video as your soul, means only video or one stop destination for your study or for your exam. This will be just a drop in the ocean. Without re reading the book, you may uh, miss many things. and uh, in literature, if you have not read the book, then you, you have not uh, got the taste of that book or the, the taste of the literature. That thing you have to keep in mind. Okay, Read the book. Have your own op opinion. And uh, here we will get, uh, uh, interpret some of the quotation from the text. But here one quotation is given. We got stared at a lot. People asked out loudly. Some out of curiosity, others out of malice, whether we were men or women or number nines or devadasis. So I have already told you that uh, through this autobiography, the writer Rabati, she uh, has tried to depict her struggle and her suffering being as a hijra in Indian community and how she has to live with it, how she has to suffer for her sexuality and what kind of prejudice, what kind of stereotypes and biasness people had in, inside their minds and brains for the hijra people. Okay, So we all know we do not treat them as equally as we should and that's a very horrific fact and we should uh, and that kind of thinking, we should relinquish that kind of prejudice against Hijra community. Okay, they should be equally given chance, opportunity to to have uh, their share in our society. Okay, and so by this line, we have got to know that uh, the I mean, see, see, always got stared at a lot. These people stare him a lot. That what kind of women is she, and and why she is like that? That kind of thing. And people often ask out loudly that. As some of them out of curiosity and others out of malice, that whether uh, these are men or women or number nines or devdasis. Okay. And several men made bold to touch us. So even many men, even uh, they so brave that they e even try to touch them. Okay. On our backs, means on their backs, on their soldiers. And some attempted to grab our breasts and some even attempted. They endeavored to grab their breasts. So that is despicable. So this kind of thing she, she had to go through and that is pitiable. Then, uh, original or duplicate, they shouted and hooted. So some of them even uh, remarks like this: "That is your breast original, or is it duplicate?" Okay. So this kind of taunt, this this kind of it is a kind of trauma, mental trauma. They had to go through, right? So that's very despicable, actually. So that that things he has tried to depict. And at such moments, I felt despair and wonderful if there would ever be a way for us to live with dignity and make a decent living. So here now, writer saying that. So every day, everywhere, they have to suffer things like this. So the writer often uh, feels that. Uh, can we live in dignity? Can we live with dignity and can we make a decent living? Right? Ravati was born a boy and she was born a boy, but she felt and behaved like a girl. In telling her life story, she has also evoked marvelously the deep unease of being in the wrong body that plagued her from childhood. And to be true to herself, to escape the constant violence visited upon her by her own family and community, the village born, Ravati ran away to Delhi to join a house of Hijras. So her own family, her own society, they had tortured, abused her as she did not. Um, behave in the way the uh, male dom dominated family or the heterosexual family behave right that's why she has been tortured countless times okay that's why one day she had uh, made up her mind to escape this constant violence okay and she ran away to delhi to join the house of hijras so that she can live in peace and she can have some kind of protection and living also and her life became an incredible series of dangerous physical and emotional journeys to, to become a woman and to find love and the truth about me is the unflinchingly courageous and moving autobiography of a hijra who fought ridicule, persecution, and violence both within her home and outside to find a life of dignity. So since her birth, since its inception, she has been 
uh, fighting to gain or to get the dignity of life that she deserves. But she has to uh, she has to face lots of traumas, lots of physical abuses, harassment owing to her physical look and sexuality, right? But in the West, this kind of thing uh, has been re- reduced in a extensive way. And in our India too, right? nowadays things are changing. And our Supreme and, and our Supreme Court, uh, it has to uh, honorable Supreme Court has to uh, give a verdict that is very po- positive towards the right of his community. And we should too, as a uh, part of uh, this country, we should show uh, this kind of sympathy, this uh, the kind of respect, and and we should uh, treat them equally, right? And uh, then what happened? Wait, uh, okay. The truth about me, a his life story, it narrates the life of. Dorisami, who, in light of being true to his inner feelings, had his nirvana done and turned into a woman called Rabati. She insisted upon being called Rabati after her transformation in a world of smashing patriarchy. She was born a man who felt like a woman. So I have already told you, uh, when, she, when she was born, at that time, she born as a child, but uh, sorry, as a man, but later she felt like uh, she is a, or she was a woman. Therefore, she had tried to change her sexuality. And this made her life altogether more difficult than it already is for those who are born as girls and go on to live as a woman. She has her weaknesses like everyone else, but her courage and willingness to evolve makes her invincible. So due to her determined mind, due to her inexorable mindset, she has uh, decided to live as a woman as she has all the quality, whatever the quality she possesses, and that were not of men. That's why she chose to become a woman. And as she chose to become a woman, uh, the society would never con- consider it. And she had her uh, share, she had her consequence for that. And that thing she has tried to, de- she has tried to live and portray. And X here. And uh, Rabati, she was originally born as a man, and feminine feelings in turn get transformed into a woman and rename herself as Rabati. Rabati. All her struggles to make her place in the society and the pain she has been through are heartbreaking, heart wrenching, and it is very painful and poignant. And we can come to know in depth about the culture of this community and the rituals they follow, how they learn their living, how they suffer in their day to day life, how they are ill treated by our society, how they have to fight for their civil rights and to get them considered as human beings, right? And here, another quote from the text. So the, it is also a very poignant quote, heart touching quote. Here she says, men and even women stare, stare at us and laugh and heckle us. I realize what a burden a hijra, hijra's their daily life is. Do people harass those who are men and w- women when they go out with their families? Why? A crippled person, a blind person, even they attract pity and people help them. If someone has experienced physical hurt, they are cared for both by the family and by outsiders who come to know of it. But we, we are not considered human. The looks I got then I, and the things I heard hurt me more than any wound. I, I wonder too, if I had not actually asked for this, maybe I would have been better off as a blind man or a woman and in the of either sex than, than what I was now. So it is a very uh, sad quotation and it is also a mirror of our society, how society treats them. So here she says that even uh, women, men and women both, they laugh at heart, they laugh at the Hijra community and they stare at them and they heckle us. Okay? And see, see here mentions that she has to suffer, she has to experience and witness this thing daily, not once in a blue moon. Okay, that's what she says. Uh, is this kind of treatment a blind person or a, de- or a crippled person, are they to face like this? No, but rather they gain sympathy from the community, means from our society. But why they are not uh, treated as human being by the society itself, right? So that thing she has tried to see here. And she has said that actually um, this kind of pain she has to... Uh, suffer daily, both physically and mentally. And you all know, mental pain is more dangerous than the physical pain, right? And she says, if if she, if she was born as a blind man or woman, woman, or an invalid of either sex, uh, or any man, uh, man or woman who is crippled, then she would have never been, she would have never treated what she was going through at the time, right? And that's the thing. Now let's take another quotation from the autobiography. Here, the writer says that uh, if society scorns us, if society scorns us, then we turn to our families, if we have a family. But if family scorns us, who do we turn to? Is this why people like me do not stay in touch with their families? Could not God have created me as a man or a woman? Why did he make me this way? Why is he severing this spectacle that he created? Families respect you only if you have money, you look modern, wear nice clothes and jewels. If you are hijra and poor, you must expect to be abused and humiliated. It is best I be with others like me, only that would ensure me of dignity. So from this line, you have already uh, known the pain of being born as a hijra. So here she asks a question that the society always disrespects them. They treat them as, as if they are not human being. And uh, if sometimes society scorned a man or women, then they often turn to families. And family, they, 
protect them. But if family itself, if family itself uh, is against the hijras, then then what they will do, right? So they have no option. They are impotent and they are helpless. That's why she's saying that uh, she now cannot be a part of her family because her family itself disrespect her, disown her. And and she here says that that uh, why God has created human beings like his hijra. Why she and she has not been born as man or a woman? So that kind of thing she has tried to mention here. Okay. Now, okay, here, another quote. I am today where many of us are today. It is not so much that we are abducted into sex work. Rather, we are the very reasons for existence of sex work. And there is no exaggeration. Society and law not only think we are doing wrong, but are violent towards us. For the sake of money, I have put aside my honor and taken to the roads. I am called a hooker. What should the police be called them? They who use us and snatch money from us. It is another point in description about the life of Hijra community, where she is saying that uh, actually for the Hijra community, the sex industry, or prostitution work is going on in our society okay and society often turn their eye turn their blind eye blind eye when it comes to prostitution then no one no one will say rather some of the section of our society itself they will go to engage in sexual industry or prostitution for their sexual uh, satisfaction okay and actually as his community are helpless they are drawn to sex work and they are often forced to do it and for the sake of money they had to put aside their honor and they, they were taken to the roads and they were called as hooker. And police also call them like that. Okay. And police even snatch their money. Okay. So this this is a reality, brutal reality is right, David. Okay. Uh, then uh, this will be this will be just a part one of this autobiography here. I will I would like to read these lines. Rabati tell, tells the story of her life in her own words about how she grew up, female trapped in a male form, along with the pressure, ridicule, and violence she endured from her family and the community around her, trying to convince her she, she, she was really male. Often she fled from them to find a refugee among the hijras, a subculture of, of transsexual women similar to herself, misunderstood, abused, and finding solace in each other, creative, sorry, creating lives of meaning and ritual in their own communities. The narrator discovered their strengths and fatal flaws going from location to location, trying to survive and find a safety in a society which offered little. Eventually, she has struggled toward a life of activism, improving her lot while experiencing love and outbreak. So that's it for this video. If you want, then I can bring the part two of this video. Okay, uh, that's it. And last thing i would like to say is do your own research have your own perspective do not rely on me who knows i might have missed many things from the text okay because i have taken this thing from the various sources of the internet thank you so much